All right, well, hi again, and welcome back to the Baseball Replay Journal. We have another 1908 uh, game for you for uh, national pastime. We have the uh, New York Giants and the Philadelphia Phillies. Hopefully the glare here on the uh, dice cam won't be too bad for you. I'm not quite sure what is causing that, but uh, we'll just go ahead and keep uh, moving forward. And uh, up first is Mike Donlin, and um, we have to make sure that we're actually here. Donlin rolls a seven and is on first base for the first hit of the game. I noticed something. Uh, Cyrus, if you're watching this, there is a bug with your program. If I set the starting lineups for the New York Giants first in this game the way that I wanted and then change the um, home team uh, afterwards, the starting lineups reset to default and don't keep my changes. So fix it, please. And uh, Don on first base, we're going to go for a hit and run here, which I think is what we would probably do in real life, either that or bunt. Um, we get the uh, Magic 66, and uh, we get to re-roll. We're 56, there's a double, and that scores the runner. And just like that, it's one nothing Giants. How about that? Cy Seymour is up next. Man, what a lineup this one is. Cy Seymour, Art Devlin. And we know about all these people, of course, because since we're good baseball history students, we have um, read about Crazy 08. We have read the books about the 1908 baseball season, um, and uh, we know what we're talking about. Devlin gets that magic 31. That's that great hit and run number, but uh, we're bunting here with him. And uh, gets the bunt across 2 nothing Giants with Christy Mathewson on the land. My goodness, that is going to last, isn't it? And uh, just like the, the Giants go down in order, here's, um, or down in order, they go down in the first. And here comes Christy Mathewson to the mound. Uh, Sherry McGee comes up and hits a fly ball to left field. That's one out. Christy Mathewson, I did a little bit of research in the 1900 um, season. I actually played that using NP3 as uh, Osborne strikes out two away. Um, and uh, Mathewson um, was a rookie in 1900, came up about uh, probably I would say about August or so of that season. And uh, the New York papers took a liking to him right away, even though the New York Giants were awful. Um, and uh, Bransfield's going to go deep on Mathewson uh, for a double. And, uh, well, no no-hitter today, folks. Sorry about that. John Titus up next. And um, he uh, ends up grounding out to third base, and that does that, top of the second inning. Matheson was a hit right from the very start. You have to understand that. And uh, the uh, Giants fans knew a good, uh, as Bridewell strikes out, Bridwell, sorry, um, there's one away. You have to understand that, and I think sometimes that gets kind of lost as well. We forget, as Shannon hits a, a single um, to right field, we forget, looking back, how bad the New York Giants were in 1900 and 1901 and 1902. We think, oh, this was a team that was always good. That's not the case at all. Um, and uh, we have a little uh, ground ball there um, to a second. Bresnahan is out. Bresnahan, by the way, in uh, I'm sorry, he's on first base. He's a little uh, a fielder's choice. Bresnahan, 1908, almost started every single game that season, um, challenging those who thinks that. Uh, think that uh, catchers should be platooned or played only once in a while. This guy was tough. Um, Matheson with a little pop-out, and we're up to the bottom of the second inning already. A little pop-up by, by Knab, I suppose, and uh, to third base, and there's one away. I have to look over <laughs> my shoulder. That's a 16. A little ground ball to second base, two away quickly, and here's Mickey Doolin. And Doolin also gets your magic 66, but it's not quite so magic. Here in uh, 1908, you're not so likely to hit a home run, which, of course, is realistic. Um, however, Doolin, uh, don't confuse Doolin with Doolin. Doolin gets the base hit, and it's 2-1 to one now, Giants. And uh, Matheson is starting to give up some hits here. And there's another hit to uh, the pitcher, George McQuillan, and that makes runners in first and second now here with two outs in the bottom of the second inning. And uh, McGee um, is, takes a ball. Uh, Matheson, of course, with the double Zs, he's, uh, he's not going to give a lot of walks. There's a little fly ball to left field, and that will do that. And here comes Donlin up for the uh, start of the third inning. And uh, he has a little pop-up to the shortstop, one away. There's a Doyle with a, a base on balls, and now that makes two outs. You know, the Giants didn't really become such a great team until after they bought so many of those Baltimore Orioles players in 1902, something that we will talk about in the future. A little ground ball to third base um, that uh, is a uh, put out, puts uh, Doyle up there to uh, second, um, two away now for Art Devlin. And... Uh, Anyway, it's really not until, honestly, around 1904, 1905 that the Giants start becoming a really, really big team. 
Um, there's a ground ball to uh, second, um, and that's that for the Giants in the top of the third, and here come the Phillies again. But uh, people forget about that. People tend to remember as uh, uh, Osborne pops up to, uh, what was that, to third base, people tend to remember just, you know, the good times with McGraw. They also forget, by the way, Bransfield, the base hit, and he's still second um, with the next batter up there, um, and that happened quickly, didn't it? Look, I didn't have to call for a steal or anything. And uh, here comes John Titus, runner in scoring position, tying run, by the way, in scoring position. And uh, he singles home the tying run. And boy, the Phillies might have something going here. And now we have to ask ourselves, do we bunt? What do we do? I think we do bunt, try to get Titus over to a second for Grant. Let's say uh, 33, which means we have to worry about our little E's. Safe at first um, and runner out at second, which um, I think means it does not count as a sacrifice. One of the difficulties of 1908 is trying to make sure that you have your sacrifices up where they need to be. Matheson uh, gives up a walk there to Grant. It's two out walk to Grant now, and here comes Doolin. And that is a one, yes. And he has a little infield pop fly, and uh, we go up to the uh, top of the fourth inning. Um, hopefully you can't hear the noise. There is a noise that comes from windows every time uh, we change innings or one of those alerts comes up from the game. Um, I'm trying to make it so that this is a little bit um, easier on your ears. Tenny gets a, a base hit single and uh, ends up uh, being caught stealing afterwards. That's that little C come into effect, and that's one away for the Giants here in the top of the fourth inning. Bridwell next with a uh, single to uh, right field, and uh, we'll see what we can do with him. We're, once again, we're probably going to bunt here in this situation. Tie game 2-2, two -two. and uh, it's another one of those fielder's choice um, things that does not go down in the box score as a bunt in the end. Wild pitch to Bresnahan, and that gets Shannon up to second base. We're going to get another wild pitch. <laughs> two wild pitches by George McQuillan in a row. Um, and uh, just like that, uh, you have a runner at third base, and this error is going to get him home in his 3-2 to two Giants. And that brings up Christy Mathewson with two outs. 3-2 to two Giants as Bresnahan reaches the board on that um, error. Mathewson strikes out. There's no, no surprise there, and we go to the bottom of the fourth. Um, a ball one there to do, and again, Mathewson not giving up a whole bunch of walks here in this season. Rolls that uh, crazy 22. Apologies for my dog. Rolls that crazy 22. There's a uh, ground ball to uh, third or to first base, sorry. And uh, Matheson runs over to make the put out, one away. And uh, that's going to be a strike out there to McQuillan. And uh, my apologies for not moving up to the next card. This two away. And uh, McGee gets a, a single to center. McGee, um, is this the same McGee that had the uh, famous baseball card here? I have to go look that one up. And uh, it doesn't matter now. Osborne gets the little tapper to uh, third base, and that does it for the Phillies in the bottom of the fourth. So if we go to the uh, top of the fifth. So you can see you get really into uh, MP3, and that is a one. You really get into MP3, you can get in a real uh, pattern here, and um, these games just can go really, really quickly. And you have to be careful here. You want to make sure you're actually looking at the card and not just click, 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 click. That's one of the reasons why I roll the dice with my hands so I have to, you know, so I can slow myself down a little bit and uh, don't get into that temptation to just zoom through it because it's uh, not as uh, much fun if you zoom through it all. All right, so Doyle strikes out because of, uh, as we'll see here in a sec. Oh, no, because this is, a 12 is a strikeout um, with a runner on second base. Um, had that not been a strikeout, then we would have to look into the little E and do all of the uh, fun things that go along with that. Um, I keep hitting the uh, dice cam. Single by uh, Cy Seymour, and um, around comes Doyle to score. It is thrown out on a good throw by Osborne. Um, Seymour makes it to second base on the throw. And now there are two away, and uh, the Giants still threatening. And uh, they're not going to be threatening anymore. A little ground ball to third base, and that does that. Here we are at the bottom of the fifth inning already. A little 65 roll by Bransfield, and uh, we're going to see a little pop-up to uh, third base, and that's one out. The reason why it's a pop-up to third base and not to the catcher, I think, is because it's kind of an overused play result. It always seems to come up. 
and that's a little ground ball to shore this two away. The Appa game is a pop-up to the catcher, and so if in Appa, if you're fastidious about fielding, um, you're going to find too many pops up to the catcher. Um, Knaib uh, gets the single and then is caught stealing on the uh, next pitch. Again, that's realistic, right? Three to two ball game, bottom of the fifth inning. I would I would probably send him in that case. Um, Tenny, a little paw, uh, fly out the left fielder is one away. You're probably wondering about, well, how do we know about all those caught stealings? There are ways to estimate it um, when you are trying to create a season, you're trying to make all this happen. In fact, your numbers on baseball reference, and uh, that's a little ground ball to short, and one, uh, two away now for the Giants, top of the six. The numbers uh, for catcher caught stealing a baseball reference for before like 1920 or whenever the official stats started are all estimates. Um, they are not the official numbers because the official numbers don't technically exist. Um, but the estimates are um, probably as good as the official numbers. These estimates used here as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning are estimates, I believe, that uh, 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 Bill Staff came up with himself. Grant is a fly ball to right field is one away. I'll have to ask him about that, actually. Maybe he has some insight for us. Doolin, and he has a little ground ball to short, two away. Matheson pitching very, very well still, and Doolin is going to get a base hit off of him. That brings up the pitcher now, but with two outs in the bottom of the six. This is the problem. With two outs, you can't bump with him. You can't do much. So he gets a little foul out to the catcher, and there's that foul to the catcher. So he is still there somewhere. Up to the top of the seventh we go. Bresnahan has a little ground ball to second, and that's one away, and up comes big six. And uh, he has a little ground ball to second as well, and that's two gone. And up now is Donlin, and he hits the fly ball to right field, and that's that. Bottom of the seventh inning, and on we go. McGee with a fly ball to center field, one out. Here comes Osborne. A little fly to right field, two away. And uh, this is what happens in 1908. You want to see action, this is probably not the place to go. And uh, normally there'd be action there if uh, Branch feels able to get a full walk, but because of Matheson's rating, um, that's not going to happen. Branchfield does get a base hit to first, um, tries to steal second uh, on the next hitter, and is caught stealing top of the eighth inning we go. We can turn that off, by the way, if we're worried about it. We can click on no steal attempt during plate appearance. Frankly, at this point, I'm not too worried about it. I mean, this is opening day. You know, I'm not too worried about this. You can worry about that. If you think that I'm wrong, tell me in the comments, and uh, maybe I'll fix it. Maybe I won't. Two away now. Um, Giants up and down very, very quickly here, and here's uh, Devlin, and he flies out to left field, and we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and the tension mounts, and that is a three. There's a single by John Titus, and up comes Knabe, and we're going to bunt. I think the best thing to do here is bunt. It's either bunt or hit and run. I think we're going to bunt. And the bunt is successful. There's a little bunt over to a third base, and that's one away. Eddie Grant now up with a, a uh, opportunity to uh, put the Phillies uh, level with the Giants. Let's see what he does. It's that 22. It's a, but uh, since Matheson is such a good pitcher um, with that uh, excellent Q0 rating and the high normal rating, he is still a B. So it's just a little tapper to Matheson. Moves uh, Titus over to third, but with uh, two away. And Doolin can only ground out to the shortstop. And on we go to the top of the ninth inning. A little ground ball by Tenney to second base. There's one. Bridwell now. And uh, just barely avoids that uh, E number. There's a fly ball to center field. Two away now. And uh, Shannon hits a fly ball to right field, and that does it for the Giants in the top of the ninth. For the Phillies coming up here, we have Doohan, and then we'll have a pinch hitter followed by McGee again. And uh, we'll see what happens from there. Doohan hits a little uh, ground ball to the pitcher, and there's one away. My apologies, he strikes out. This is what I get for reading this. I should be looking over here. He strikes out because of Matherson's uh, wonderful rating. Now we have a question as to who we want to put on. Thomas or McCormick is the question. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong guy. Man. Boy, it's kind of a tricky question, right? I mean, with Thomas, you get a little bit more um, on base percentage, a little bit better chance of actually getting on base. But I think McCormick has a little bit more power. Um, in this situation, I think we're going to put McCormick in. Let's see what happens. It'll be fun.
And in the end, he flies out to right field, and it is moot. And it doesn't matter what we would have done with either one. And McGee gets a triple. Boy, how many times do you see that? You see a guy who's got a 2 at 33. Now, that's something that if we saw that in APA, I can imagine the uh, APA Journal would be full of articles about that back in the good old days. Um, people arguing about that and whether that's realistic or not, whether that's right or not. I don't know. Maybe if Bill watches this, he can put in a little uh, comment and let us know what he was thinking. Um, you can't see this dice roll, can you? That is a 25, and that is a fly ball to right field, and that is your ball game. And uh, just like that, the uh, Giants win 3-2 to two here on opening day in uh, Philadelphia. So thank you very much for watching. Um, again, if you like this, hit the like button. Leave me a comment below. Let me uh, know about how bad my uh, managing is, and um, let me know how you're feeling about stuff. And uh, subscribe. You'll see one of these every day. Bye.